Well, hello everybody. Um, welcome back. If you've joined um, me again, I'm Louise Savage. This is Louise Savage Muses. Uh, welcome if you haven't joined me before. Um, so what's prompted this video is that recently I had a birthday. I was 57. Again, I have this thing. <laughs> it's happened for the last three or four years where I've thought I've been a certain age all year, i.e. the age I really am plus one. Um, so all this year I thought I was 57 and then I was 57 the other day. It's really good, I recommend it. <laughs> it's a bit like time travel. So I feel like I'm sort of getting younger, which is probably uh, just delusional. Anyway, um, I was lucky enough to have a wonderful weekend away with some of my family um, for my birthday. But um, I always think it's really interesting. I, I get lots of books for my birthday um, each year and that's a lovely thing. Um, but it always looks like a real sort of eclectic mix when I stack it together. So I thought I'd share with you the, the books that I was given um, and, um, and just, yeah, it's interesting, it's fascinating. Um, I don't know whether what I'm trying to say is that the books you're given is a reflection of who you are, I don't know. Um, so the first one um, was given to me by a lovely colleague at work called Alex. And um, and he, uh, a couple of years ago, gave me Shantaram for my birthday, which I'd never read and I don't think I would ever have picked up. And I absolutely loved it. It's a really sort of dark tale of the, the underbelly of, of um, Mumbai nightlife um, and daylife. Um, so, you know, I know that his choices uh, are things that I wouldn't normally pick up, but but I really enjoy. So I had never come across this. I might have seen it in the bookshops, I don't know, but I, I would never ever have picked this up. So I'm really intrigued. And it's non-fiction November as well, so it, it fits in beautifully with that. So it's called Mr Nice by Howard Marks and it's his autobiography. I think he's written two or three of these. Um, and apparently years ago, he was a, a drug dealer, a marijuana, um, he had loads and loads of different aliases. I'm talking, I, th I can't remember how many, it does say somewhere. Um, 43. He had 43 aliases. How do you cope with that? There's lots of different photos on the back, which I presume try to sort of sum those um, aliases up. Um, so he juggled all of that, but eventually he was um, caught up with and ended up in prison. So this is his, his own um, account of himself uh, and his his dealings um so it really does look at the dark underbelly of of life um and apparently it's really witty it's really funny it's really shocking um he gets described as a wonderful quote on the back a man who makes peter pan look like a geriatric with sleeping sickness <laughs> so um so yeah i'm really intrigued by this and very very much looking forward to reading it at some point and then second up was another uh, lovely colleague um, at work called Katie and um, Katie um, gave me this wonderful book. I love the cover. I just love the cover. So it's Kim Young, born 1982 um, by Chu Nam Ju. And, um, and this is a South Korean um, book and I don't think I've ever read, any read anything written by a South Korean author. And it's been a really important book because, um, as far as I'm aware, it's kind of um, really accelerated the discussion about gender inequality in South Korea and, um, and it's, it's, it's been very, very highly talked of and um, is beginning to sort of change the landscape a little bit. And I think this is, although it's a novel, I think it's partly autobiographical because I think it focuses on a woman who gives up her career for example after she's had a baby um, and it looks as though this is this is um, telling the story of um, a young woman and her um, her sort of confrontations or the way that her life um, has been affected by sexism um, so, for example, um, she was born um, a girl and that thoroughly disappointed her in-laws um, and clearly that would, you know, have an impact on you, wouldn't it? It'd be difficult to, um, her parents' in-laws, I mean, 
and it'd be difficult to escape that. So yeah, I'm really intrigued by this and I think it's the sort of book that I would want to sit and read all in one go um, to get the full impact. Uh, next up is um, something very, very different. You see what I mean about a really eclectic mix? So this was a present from my daughter and it's um, Myths from Mesopotamia. Um, so it includes things like the Epic of Gilgamesh. So all the texts in here are about 4,000 years old and were originally written in um, what is now Iraq. Um, uh, my daughter tells me that the one I really have to read is Ishtar's Descent to the Underworld. She she studied this, my daughter did, um, during her uh, undergraduate degree and um, really, really enjoyed it and was surprised that I hadn't um, encountered it before. So it's all translated, it's all written in, um, in, in poetry. Well, it's fragmentary because, of course, there are bits missing. Um, but yeah, I'm really intrigued to get stuck into myths from Mesopotamia. When I was, um, one of the first books I remember not being able to put down would be when I was about 11 or 12 on a beach somewhere. Um, I think it might have been in, uh, in France, actually, in Brittany, uh, my, my second ever trip abroad. And, um, and I was reading myths, no, what's it called? Murder in Mesopotamia by Agatha Christie. I remember absolutely devouring that. So Mesopotamia has this kind of real um, mythical quality in my head for that reason. Um, next up are two gifts from um, my son, Simon Savage. Incidentally, that earlier book intrigued me because 1982 was his birth year. So um, I think it's interesting that, that she is contemporary with, with him. It kind of gives me a real frame of reference when I'm reading the book. Um, so this is a wonderful book, which I'm sure I would have got round to buy myself at some point. Isn't it lovely to have a hardback? Um, so Simon has given me Kate Moss's Warrior Queens and um, Quiet Revolutionaries. And this, this again, chimes beautifully with nonfiction November. Um, Kate Moss is somebody who I, I really, really admire. I've had the, the good fortune to meet her a few times and she's such a generous, lovely woman. Um, and um, this book this book is a, a sort of exploration of, she's trying to give voice, I think, to about a thousand women who she feels uh, merit a place in history and who've kind of been airbrushed out, or, or at least maybe not as cynical as that, but just just haven't had a mention people who we should be familiar with and aren't um but also it's it's her own um piece of detective work trying to find out about her great grandmother who was an author um and uh her books have kind of disappeared and so kate went on this um journey to try and find out more about her um great grandmother's uh, work and i'm trying to remember what her name was Lily Watson, that's right. And you can see all these lovely letters inside, look inside the front cover, um, which I presume are letters uh, from Lily herself. Um, I don't know, I could be, um, or maybe letters to Lily, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I think that looks fabulous. And, and it strikes me, I haven't read it yet, but I think it's a really readable and interesting way of, of looking at history. And then finally, another gift from Simon, uh, it's Kate Atkinson's latest novel, um, Shrines of Gaiety. Now, Kate Atkinson is a huge favourite of mine. I love her novels. I think I've read them all, I think. Um, particularly enjoy the Jackson Brody series. Um, but this one sounds really interesting because, again, it's, she's, she's chosen a setting for this novel that um, I'm not particularly familiar with. I mean, short of The Great Gatsby, I don't think I've read many books set in the 20s. Uh, and this one is set in, in Soho in, you know, and I think focuses on the kind of the, the nightclub life. Um, it's about a woman who I think is trying to sort of socially climb and particularly trying to um, make her, her children, I think she's got six children or something like that, trying to make them successful. And I think it has its, um, its drawbacks. Um, 
so it sounds really really intriguing and um, I'm very very much looking forward to reading this too. So a very quick uh, video this week. Um, the nights are drawing in, I'm really enjoying curling up with books at the moment, it's, it's gorgeous isn't it? Uh, you kind of, I don't know, I, I feel, not that I ever feel guilty reading but um, particularly um, in this hemisphere anyway um, when the, when the nights draw in and it starts to get darker in the evenings there's a real appeal to cuddling up with a good book and it has been pelting down with rain it's very dark outside which is why I've got the lights on um it's been pelting down with rain today so I've come in from uh, from digging outside <laughs> I'm, I'm digging a car park as you do um I've been shifting loads of gravel but anyway that's by the by um, so I'm really enjoying sort of uh, the prospect of snuggling up with, um, I'm reading The Promise at the moment by Damon Galgo, but I'll share that with you some other time. Anyway, take care. Lots of uh, love to you all. Bye.